Hey, I'm Drew Cooper with Swing Catalyst, and we're just gonna do a quick overview of what the force vectors are. We're getting a lot of questions on how to make sense of them, what they mean, and then kind of the more challenging question to answer in general, sort of like a blanket statement, is what is good and what is bad. So to describe what they are, the force vector, if you've got dual plates, will be a left force vector, so like a lead foot, a trail foot, and then a sum total. If you've got just a single motion plate, you're just gonna get the summed total of like the full ground reaction force. So what this would mean is, if, if this were my vector and this was my arrow, and I took my lead foot and I pushed it down and towards the target, the force vector is gonna lean away from the target and up. So what you can imagine is that's the motion my body would make from the ground reaction force. So if I push down and towards the target, my body's gonna move to the right. Ideally, what gets met is if I do that, I then push into my right side and I get a reaction that is keeping me centered or pushing me back to the target, however you wanna think about that. But that's the, the general concept of if I push down and away, the force vector leans the opposite direction. Now, the more horizontal I push, the more the force vector is gonna lay horizontal in the opposite direction. Uh, the more towards the camera I push, the more the vector is gonna lay away from the camera. So it's a three dimensional uh, vector. So if I push, my foot is on a clock and I'm pushing towards say 10 o'clock, the force vector isn't perfectly up and down. It's not straight away, it's sort of at an angle. So it's going towards or away from the target away from the maybe the ball line and up so it's kind of got a direction to it the greater the arrow is in height the more force is being pressed through that limb so you can imagine if i just did a little push the force may be down beneath my knee and if i had one of those big justin james sort of driver forces where the foot goes flying that lead foot vector may be up over my head somewhere the direction could still be the same, it's just a matter of uh, magnitude. Now, if that makes sense, the next question typically is, well, what's, what's good and what's bad? Now, this kind of is difficult to answer because it kind of depends on the golfer, the golf shot, and sort of what you're trying to do as a coach. Now, the biggest example of that would be like a powered driver swing where maybe we want a big force off the golf ball, big wind up and force towards the golf ball, and then a big launching and unloading of force again. Comparatively, if I wanna hit a ball under a tree or hit a flighted wedge shot, maybe I don't really ever kind of get way off the golf ball. Um, or I'm teaching a high handicapper, maybe that's something we don't wanna do. So I think it's gonna be very difficult to say, this is always good or this is bad, but in general, we're gonna have that pressure sequence of away from the target, towards the target, and then kind of back away from the target again. Again, blanket statement in general. I wouldn't say that's good all the time, but that's kind of like a general pattern that you'll see in maybe drivers, long irons, or people with slower club head speeds trying to hit the ball a bit further. Um, so to recap, again, a, a force vector is just a ground reaction force, a, vis a visual representation of that. So if I push down and towards the target, it points up and away. Uh, the more horizontal I push, the more horizontal the force vector lays. And then the more, say, say I get my center of mass on top of my left foot and I push straight down, the, the more vertical the uh, force vector will be. So again, it's just showing you visually what the graphs are displaying. So the information is the same. It may be just a little bit easier to understand the arrow in 3D space. So I hope that's helpful.